welcome to the clinical effort against secondhand smoke exposure, the CEASE program. The CEASE team is partnered with the American Academy of Pediatrics Julius B. Richmond Center of Excellence and the American Academy of Pediatrics Tobacco Consortium to create the best program possible for child health care clinicians. Years of research went into developing CEASE so that child health care clinicians would be able to address family tobacco use in a routine and effective manner. This video will demonstrate how to use CEASE in your office. The reasons for this program are simple and clear. 36% of all children in the U.S. live with a household member who is a smoker, and children who live with a smoking parent are more likely to start smoking themselves. Secondhand tobacco smoke lingers long after the cigarette is extinguished and coats every surface inside the home with toxins. Secondhand tobacco smoke is deadly. It kills three times more children than all childhood cancers combined. Our research shows that while a majority of parents would accept medications from their child's doctor to help them quit smoking, only 7% get that help. A majority of parents want to be enrolled in a telephone quit line, but only 1% get enrolled. And a majority of parents would be more satisfied with their doctor's visit if their child's doctor addressed their smoking. Even though parents may not be ready to quit smoking, it's important to offer help. Offering help opens the door for a conversation about quitting smoking, either now or at a future visit. By helping even one of your smoking families quit smoking, you have made a huge impact on their lives. CEASE works with pediatric offices to connect families with available tobacco cessation services like the telephone quit line. The following videos explain how you can implement the program and use it with patients and parents who do and do not want to quit smoking. Thank you for watching. So um, I'm really excited how to discuss um, how we can actually implement the CEASE program in our practice. Step one is the ask step. Every family at every visit needs to be screened upon checking in at the front desk using the iPad survey to identify tobacco use and exposure in each and every household. If there are no tobacco users in the household, the survey will end after the first question and will prompt the parent to return the iPad to the front desk staff. If a member of the household is identified as using tobacco, then the iPad will automatically ask more questions about tobacco use and the tobacco user's interest in enrolling in the free state tobacco quit line and receiving nicotine replacement medication. Every time the parent returns the iPad to the front desk, the staff will look at the iPad screen. If there is a tobacco user in the household, the staff will be prompted to hand out the cease action sheet. Step one of the cease action sheet is completed by the family in the waiting room and taken into the exam room with them. It is important that all families fill out the iPad. This information will help Compile a list of all patients with tobacco exposure in the household at your practice. Handing out the cease action sheet allows the family to get immediate support from the physician during the clinical visit. For parents who indicate 
on the iPad survey that they are interested in enrolling in the free tobacco quit line. The front desk will be prompted to hand out the Facts to Quit enrollment form along with the cease action sheet. The form is filled out and signed in the waiting room and then handed back to the front desk staff who will then fax it to the quit line. Okay, so as the receptionist, I'm responsible for handing out the iPad intake survey. Mm -hmm. I think okay. that's right, yep. All right, and so they complete a brief intake survey. And when they return it to me, I look at the screen, and if there's tobacco use reported in the patient's household, the screen tells me that I need to hand them a cease action sheet, and then I click yes to confirm that I've handed it out to them. Okay, so you're handing out the iPad uh, screening survey to each and every family. Um, and then if there is a person in the household who smokes, they'll click yes. And that's who we're really intervening with. It's the people who click yes on that survey. Right, and that's when I give the cease action sheet. And if they've indicated that they're interested, I could also give them the quit line form so that they can get enrolled in the state tobacco quit line. Got it, okay. So for those families who have a tobacco user in the family, um, those are the ones that are going to get connected to the quit line and um, possibly uh, also get additional intervention. Um, but it sounds like the front desk has a very important role in this program and just making sure that the families get the cease action sheet when they need it and get connected to the quit line for help with smoking cessation. I think you're right. Yeah. Using the cease action sheet during the clinical visit is the key to success. The cease action sheet serves as a guide to accomplishing the three steps, ask, assist, and refer. Each step should be documented in the patient's electronic medical record. Step one of the cease action sheet asks about a current tobacco use and a tobacco user's interest in additional resources, such as the tobacco quit line and nicotine patch and gum. This is completed by the parent or teen in the office waiting area. Step two of the cease action sheet serves as a guide for documenting in the patient's electronic medical record who the tobacco users are, family's home and car smoking rules, and the tobacco cessation services provided at the visit. Document the tobacco use and exposure in the child's household on the problems list in the electronic medical record. This will enable all clinicians who see the family to easily identify those in need of tobacco assistance. Use the notes section to document additional services you provide. So in step one, it looks like families tell us what they want to help them quit smoking. And then in step two is where we give it to them. In step two then, we can encourage them by uh, helping them quit smoking and supporting them when they do, um, and then making smoke-free home and car rules um, for every single family. I think the, this part of step two allows us to document what the smoke-free home rule is, what the smoke-free car rule is, and maybe most importantly, who smokes in that child's household, mother, father, patient, or other. Um, and this information can go into our electronic health record so that anyone who sees that patient subsequently will know that this is an issue to reinforce and address. Now looking at the rest of step two here in terms of the giving them what they want to help them quit, we have this uh, box here, prescription given for patch and gum. Um, and that's where we can document that we gave them um, nicotine replacement therapy. So instead of smoking cigarettes to get their nicotine, they can get that from nicotine patch and nicotine gum, two forms at once, um, which can uh, double or triple the chances of the parent quitting smoking. And then the next thing that uh, we can do and document whether they were enrolled in the quit line at the front desk. Um, and then we can also enroll them in the text to quit program um, using their cell phone, if they have a cell phone. Um, and I think most parents these days are having uh, you know, cell phones, if not a smartphone, at least a phone that can uh, send and receive texts. Uh, we also have the option of documenting when their quit date is.
and that can be put in the electronic health record as well for follow-ups. Well, that sounds great. So for this intervention to happen then at the visit, I need to make sure that the front desk hands out the iPad to every parent who comes to the office and then the staff is going to uh, follow up with the prompts that appear on the iPad and hand out the cease action sheet when prompted and also hand out this fax to quit form when prompted on the iPad. Is that correct? That's right. I think the front desk is really key here for this intervention to work. Um, like you said, the iPad gets handed out. Um, for those parents who smoke, that's going to be the chance to get them hooked into the quit line and also um, to get them the cease action sheet, which then will go into the room with them where I can get them additional things in terms of what they ask for to help them quit. Um, this is really a team effort type of intervention. It's going to be front desk. Um, it's going to be the nurses who bring the patients into the room. And then it's also going to be our clinicians in the rooms themselves um, who are reinforcing and then documenting in the electronic record what we do to help parents quit smoking. That sounds great. Good. So I see that on every cease action sheet, there are prescriptions on the bottom for nicotine replacement therapy. Why do we give them the prescriptions if it's an over-the-counter medication? Well, that's a really good question. I mean, first of all, the reason why we're giving nicotine at all is that um, we want every parent to be using nicotine replacement therapy instead of um, the nicotine that they're getting from their cigarettes, because that nicotine has the 7,000 other harmful chemicals in it. So by giving them two forms of nicotine replacement therapy here, nicotine patch and nicotine gum, we triple their chances of quitting, being a successful long-term quitter. With the doctor's prescription, parents and teens can get the nicotine replacement therapy for free or for the price of a copay. And this is really important um, because it's covered if the doctor writes a prescription or if we sign that prescription and give it to them, they're much more likely to use it if it's a covered product. Right. Um, and then, uh, you know, why does this happen in the pediatric office? And it's really that parents may not see their own doctor or they may not even have one. So this may be the best chance to get them this life-saving therapy. The pre-printed prescriptions on the cease action sheet make it easy to routinely prescribe over-the-counter nicotine replacement medicine to parents. Just fill it in, sign the prescription, and tear it off. Be sure to document prescribing NRT medicine in the patient's electronic medical record for future follow-up. You should also refer parents who smoke to your state's free tobacco quit line. The quit line provides important additional cessation counseling and resources to tobacco users. The quit line fax enrollment form should be offered to all tobacco users. A tobacco user can be given a quit line form to complete at the front desk after requesting it on the iPad, on the cease action sheet, or during their encounter with their child's doctor. This is an example of a Massachusetts fax to quit enrollment form. Your quit line form will be specific to the state your practice is located in. After the parent agrees to enroll in the quit line, have them fill out this sheet. Your office staff will fax the form to the quit line directly. The quit line will then contact the parent to provide ongoing support. If a parent is not ready to enroll in the quit line, you can also give them the quit line's phone number, which is printed on the cease action sheet. So the quit line is really important. The quit line um, is what we're trying to get every parent who smokes and every uh, person who smokes enrolled in the quit line. That's uh, one of the principal goals of this program. Um, and so we need to figure out exactly how we get the parent enrolled. Um, the first chance is with the iPad survey, the parent fills out the quit line form and then hands it back to the front desk, and they could fax that directly in. But let's say the parent has the quit line form, and they're not able to complete it in the waiting area. They get called in too soon. We hope we have that problem, right? So then they can complete the fax to quit enrollment form in the patient room. 
Um, and then we need to get it back to the front desk, maybe in a basket or something like that, where then the front desk can fax those in at the end of the day. Does that make sense for a flow? Yeah, I think so. It looks like we've covered all three steps. Step one, the ask, asking um, about who smokes in the household and then asking what they might want to help them quit. Step two is the assist, where we um, document the smoke-free home and car rules and get people the medications that they need and doing a lot of that documentation, making sure that it gets transferred into the electronic medical record. And then step three, that referral form, making sure that we get that referral, that enrollment into the quit line. Um, so with that, with those three steps, I think we can now go to the implementation guide where we figure out you know, exactly when and who and how each step is, is going to be done. That sounds like a good plan. I think we can also post it so that everyone can see it. Yeah, let's post it in one of the offices where everyone goes, like either the lunchroom or in the office where we have meetings, so people can see what their specific responsibilities are and make sure that we get this done together. Okay. Your practice will designate a tobacco control coordinator who will receive weekly reports from the study team. These reports are generated by the iPad intake survey data. Because every practice functions differently, the CEAS study team will work with you to develop the best plan for utilizing the coordinator in your practice. The tobacco control coordinator will distribute the reports to the appropriate staff members. Each clinician's report is a list of their patients that have recently been identified as having a tobacco user in the household. Okay, so the iPad survey then will generate these uh, reports that get sent to the study team. They'll then send us back a list of families where the parents use tobacco and smoke. These reports are going to be done by clinician. Um, so I think we need someone who's going to receive these reports from the study team and then be able to give them out to the doctors in the practice. Yeah, that sounds like something that I could do. I could serve as the tobacco control coordinator for the practice. When those reports come in every week, I'll make sure that the front desk gets their report and posts it in a location where everyone can see it. And then I'll also make sure to have the reports of the smokers um, in the practice that are organized by clinician, that each clinician gets that report. And I'll, I'll certainly be happy to. You know, that. I think that's good. And I think making sure that, you know, everyone knows that you are the tobacco control coordinator and you're going to be giving those reports. And also, you know, making sure that the front desk understands the weekly report that they get so that they can see their progress in their screening and use of the iPad survey. I think as long as we monitor that, we give the clinicians um, their reports, then we'll have a good sense of how we're doing and monitoring our progress over time as a practice. Absolutely. Great.